Now we're back on West 25th, and he's turning on to Clark Avenue right there. This, of course, is Cleveland Railway. He's on West 25th there. He just come up out of the tunnel. There was four tracks across the lower level of the high-level bridge, and uh, the two southerly tracks turn come up on West 25th Street, and the uh, others come up on Detroit. This is a fan trip. You see, he come around the corner there off of Superior and lost the trolley. He's turning on to Superior, heading out, heading east. This is right in front of Higby's and the Terminal Tower. These are west side cars. That's the terminal in the background you see. There's one of the PCC cars. And again, he's turning right in front of Higby's, coming around in front of the terminal, and then the hotel, and he'll go back down across. I believe this is the St. Clair car barns. We were on a fan trip. There's an unusual one. There's a streetcar running on no rails. That's one of the little dinkies they used to uh, push the trailers out. The cars ran all day without trailers. When rush hour came up, why those little uh, tugs would uh, take the trailer out and push it out and hook it up to the car and they'd run with the trailer for a couple of hours in the rush hour. Now here's a car coming up onto West 25th Street out of the incline that went down and across the high level bridge on the lower level. They could swing onto Franklin here and go around and get back onto Detroit if they had trouble, if one of the a car derailed under the bridge or something, the Detroit cars could come up on 25th, go around Franklin there and get back onto Detroit and continue their trip. There's one going down and one coming up. Now that's Superior, West Superior. He's going to come up on West 25th Street because he's on the southerly set of tracks. The ones on the left uh, are the ones that go to come up on Detroit. After you once start down, you're committed to where you're going to come out. But after you come out, you can swing around side streets and get back on either of the other sets. So there's a car coming underneath, and there was a station right about there where you could get on and off. This is the way it looked across the lower level of the bridge, and there's a car coming across the lower level of the bridge. That cannot be used for buses or automobiles because of the way the posts are underneath there. There's just no clearance, as you can see right there. Here's a car coming into the station that was on the east end of the bridge itself. And there he goes, he'll be coming up on the West Superior and onto the square, as you see right there. And you're looking at Public Square. This is an east side car, he's coming around onto Superior there past the library. Now we're on the 55th Street line. He's coming around there onto uh, I can't think of the name, but maybe we can catch the destination sign. He lost his trolley pole right there. He's ready to go again. Here comes another one around the same corner. It's downtown again in the snow on the square. He's coming in superior.
Superior was, uh, I believe, the, the busiest line they had. There's an old snow sweeper and a uh, hopper car, or dump car, they called it. And there's a Bernie that I believe came from Newcastle. They made it into a rail grinder. Some more snow plows. There's one of the old cars. They used those on Euclid for years and years. There's our group that was on the fan trip. This is the regular car going through. Typical downtown scene. Again, we're on Superior looking at or across the public square. And this car is coming from in front of the Union Terminal past the hotel and turning west on West Superior. That's the corner right there where the uh, Lakeshore Electric used to come around. They loaded right there to the left, and they made that turn and went down across underneath the bridge the same way as this car is going to go. Now we're back again in front of Higby's. Hotel Cleveland is right there. That's a Madison car. Now he'll take the north set of tracks going down the hill there onto the lower level of the bridge. Back again in front of the terminal. It was a busy, busy place. There was just uh, cars every few seconds. That's an old type trailer. They used those a uh, lot on St. Clair behind those cars. It was an odd combination. There's a real old one that they kept around for parades and things like that. There's a car, looks like they're stripping it, a work car. They had those buses during World War II. The buses pulled trailers, and that was one of them. Very unusual. There's a Derrick car. Another one of those old trailers. This is an unusual thing that when they had trouble, a car to get derailed or something, they'd bring these things out and set it right on top of the street, and they could go over onto the east or westbound set of tracks, go around the obstruction, come back and drop down on their own set of rails, and when the thing was all fixed, they'd pick it all up and haul it away. Nothing had to be fastened, and it was quite an ingenious arrangement, and almost all city streetcar lines had those because they needed them from time to time. There's a pretty good view of it. Now we're on the Shaker Rapid, and this is the 825 Express. Left the end of Van Aiken at 825, or 725 and got downtown at five minutes to eight. And it's the only five-car train they ran. Uh, there was another five-car that uh, come out in the evening, too, but uh, this made no stops from Shaker Square. This is a four car coming along there with the old type cars. They were running these mixed in with the PCCs at this date. There's a four car with uh, two paint jobs. Now we're down right near St. Luke's Hospital looking down into that cut. And that of course was one of the PCCs and here's two PCCs. Now these are the original ones that had the door on the left side because at one time they had planned to do some left side loading at one point. It never did occur, so those left doors were never used. There's a Fox River and Elgin car that uh, they had there, several of those. There's your, uh, I think that's your Express again, one, two, three, four, five cars, right. Some of those still had the low center where you'd go in, it was two steps up to get to the part where you sat, but most of them had been floored level. Now there's uh, all three of those are the original cars bought for the Shaker Rapid. Now we're out on the Van Aken line. Once again, those are the original Shaker cars, you can tell by the left-hand door. There we're coming up uh, where it dipped down to Gwunder Lee Road. There out at 
Van Aken almost at the end. You see, they're just building those apartments now. And gosh, they've been there for years and years now. But he's zipping right along. I don't know why this is there other than the fact that it's an old windmill that was still working. Now we're back on the shaker, and this is a shoe flyer, a runaround. Their regular track is to the left there, and they're using this temporary track on each side uh, while they're doing some work on the main line there. And there's the overhead for the Cleveland Union Terminal electrified section of the railroad. Now we're out almost to uh, oh, where you start through the cut up to Shaker Square. This is between, uh, I can't think of the name of the street there, but it's where you cross over the Pennsylvania Railroad and that sort of thing. That car looks empty, doesn't it? There's a two-car PCC train. Cleveland still had a lot of junk. Uh, men with horses. They had a livery stable downtown where they rented them. This fellow's heading out Shaker. And there's a three-car train coming off of the uh, Van Aken line, or Moreland, it used to be. 